Hi guys and welcome to another iPhone development tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is actually going to be more of a quick tip and the topic we're going to cover today is something called code snippets. Now most IDEs or integrated development environments give users a way to uh, save blocks of code that they use over and over again. Well, Xcode also has that exact same feature and it's called code snippets. And code snippets are one of those things that can make your life super easy as a developer, especially if you're creating applications that use certain kinds of objects and certain kinds of code over and over again. If you learn to use code snippets, you can really speed up that development process and make life super simple. So let's get started. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do, of course, is create a code snippet. And if you're following along, what you might want to do is open up a application that you've created that has some standard code that you find that you're going to use over and over again. So the application that I've got open is um, actually a file that I'd created uh, for another tutorial and it has within it um, some table view methods. So table views are one of those objects that I end up using quite a bit and I find that you know the code that I use is pretty standard and it would be probably useful for me to have this as a code snippet. So I've got the file open with the code in it and what I'm going to do next is direct my attention towards the top of the screen where I've got the three view buttons and I'm going to click on the rightmost button which opens the utilities view or the utilities inspector or the utilities panel. Um, if you look within this section you'll notice that of course there's the quick help up top and towards the bottom are several different options. It typically is, has defaulted to the one with the box icon checked and that's the object library. But the option that we actually want is the one with the curly braces and if we click on that you'll notice that it loads the code snippet library. Now you'll notice that there's quite a few code snippets here. These are all the ones that Xcode gives us right out of the box and that's great and this is also why when you sometimes type in certain methods they get auto completed. Well that's be uh, happening because it's sort of leveraging some of these code snippets. So in addition to offering tons of useful code snippets out of the box one awesome feature that Xcode has is of course the ability to create your own code snippets. Now if I were to click on the drop down here you'll notice that there's several sort of sub options. I'm going to click on the one called user and this actually loads a list of all the code snippets that I as a user have created and you'll notice that there's one for the add synthesize statement and one for pragma marks. I tend to like those because they make my reading make it easier for me to read my code later. Right so what we're going to do first is create our uh, first code snippet and um, one of the things like I said I use quite a bit are table views and so what I want to do is create a code snippet for my table views. So I'm going to first of all highlight all the code that I want and what I'm going to do here is select all of the code except this last method and I'll tell you why in a second. It's because I want to create two different code snippets and I also um, want to separate them out because the first set of methods are really the data source methods and sometimes you know you've got a simple table view which isn't sort of a nested table view where you click a row and it does something. All you want are the basic table view methods. So let's create two um, uh, code snippets here. So I've got all of those basic methods, um, the code for that selected. I then put my cursor towards the top of that area. Whoops, looks like I lost that. And this is sometimes tricky to do so let me try that again. I'm going to select all the code that I want and go back to the top and put my cursor and hold um, my left click button for a second and you'll notice that it now my cursor now changes and you know it may be a little bit difficult to see this in the video but my cursor has changed to an arrow and I can now drag that code right here into my code snippet library and let go and now I get this little window that allows me to add some additional comments about my code snippet First of all, of course, is the title. I'm going to call this basic table view. And then I have the option to create a summary or to add a small summary. And that typically when you enter a summary, it'll show up right here to the right of the name. So I'm going to say these are table view or let's just say data source methods. Great. You'll notice that under platform, I have three options, all iOS and Mac OS X. I'm just going to leave this at all for now. Uh, the language of course has several options if you were to click on it. We want however in this case for it to be Objective-C. Now the completion shortcut field is sort of one of the key fields that we have to work with. And the completion shortcut is what you would normally type in to sort of get a prompt from Xcode um, 
to check and see if you want to enter or insert that particular code snippet. So I read a great article the other day and I'll try to post a link to it um, at the end of this video. Uh, which talked about some of the of how you know this particular developer worked with code snippets and one of the things he suggested doing is using sort of really simple names for your code snippets for example uh, in the case of table views he simply used TTT uh, sort of as an easy way to remember it he used the same character three times and he also felt that that would limit sort of um, a conflict with one of the other uh, code snippets that maybe came out of the box with Xcode. Uh, the other field that we want to pay attention to is completion scope. And this is important because you'll notice here that um, Xcode has defaulted this to class implementation. And the reason it's done that is because it recognized the fact that we were trying to create a code snippet from some code that resided in an implementation file. Later on, we're going to create a snippet with some code that's in a header file. And you'll notice that this completion scope switches to a different value. It'll switch to class interface methods. So in this case, class implementation is correct, and we want to leave it as such. You'll also notice that we have a way to quickly edit our uh, snippet here. And as I scroll down, I want to make a quick small edit. You'll notice, of course, that within my standard code here, I'm returning something called underscore list dot count. Well, underscore list is an instance variable that is part of my project here, and it's simply an NS array object. Now, obviously, I won't name my instance variable, or at least I'm less, I'm not, it's not likely that I will name it the same in another project. So what I can do, or what Xcode allows me to do, is actually replace this with a placeholder. And the way I create the placeholder is I highlight the text I want to replace, use an angle bracket, a pound symbol, and then just give it a name. So in this case, let's just say I'm going to replace it with uh, a placeholder called array name. And we close it with a pound symbol and then uh, another angle bracket. Great. So I'm also going to highlight this uh, placeholder name and I'm going to do a command C to copy it because I happen to know that there's another instance in the code where I'm referring to my particular instance variable. So let's just scroll down real quick and see if we can find that. And here we are. So here's that other reference. I'm just going to replace this as well with array name. And you'll notice this time, of course, that um, it looks a little bit different. And you'll actually see this when we attempt to uh, use our code snippet. What's going to happen by us replacing this with sort of a placeholder value, if we have two of these values side by side, we can actually tap from one to the other. And it makes it, again, super easy to update. So that should be it. I'm going to hit Done. And my code snippet has now been created. And the great thing about code snippets is the fact that they're not tied to a project, but rather to Xcode itself, which means if I were to close this project and open a new project, I would still have this code snippet available to me, which is awesome. So let's now create another code snippet. And I am going to this time highlight that last method as well. So let me just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do a command C and highlight all of the methods and then scroll back to the top. And once again, left click and hold at the start. And then just drag that code into my code snippet library. And I must warn you, this can be a little bit tricky, the drag and drop, because initially you'll try to click into it. If you don't hold the left click button long enough, you know, you'll click into the code and then you'll have to highlight this all over again. So anyway, we're going to uh, change this title. I'm going to call this, um, let's see, we'll, we'll just call this table view. And this time I'll say that in the summary that it is data source and delegate methods. You'll notice again that, of course, platform is set to all, language is Objective-C. I can add the completion shortcut. And here's the cool thing. I can actually reuse that very same completion shortcut I used a second ago. So I'm going to go do TTT and uh, because this is also a table view. And you'll notice again this time it sets the completion scope uh, to class implementation. Now what I probably should do is go down through here and uh, replace this again with my array name and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and do just that. So I'm going to go ahead and real quick do that. Array name. And let's find the other instances where we actually use that. And let's see here. Here's this. And in our last method, I also happen to know that there is a. Um, we're creating a detail view controller. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to be tricky and change this a little bit and make that name itself a placeholder. And 
we'll give this update this so it says object and close it up and again we want to copy this do command C put this in here and all I'm doing like I said right here is updating these placeholder names so I can very easily update this later great so now that this is done I can actually hit done and that gets saved now here's sort of the power of code snippets so what I can do now that I've created these two is I can highlight all of my code here for my table views and just as an illustration I can delete it and if I wanted to add it back say this was a new project or maybe I just accidentally deleted the code I can just start typing T T T and this time you'll see that I get the two uh, code snippets that have that same shortcut so you'll notice I've got an option called basic table view and then table view I of course want the one called table view so I'm gonna hit enter and you'll notice that my code gets added. Now, of course, there are some errors being flagged, and that's simply because we have our placeholder names instead of the actual instance variable name that we needed. So this sort of should give you an idea of how you can leverage code snippets. Now, I'm going to do a Command-Z and return my code to what it was earlier because I do want to keep this code intact, and I will do a Command-S just to save that. Now, let's also talk a little bit about the fact that the um, let's double click this code snippet real quick first so we can cover this uh, takes it a second sometimes let me click on edit and let's talk about the fact um, about how this completion scope comes into play so like I said earlier our completion scope for both the basic table view and the table view code snippet was class implementation and we saw in a, a second ago that when I typed in TTT it gave me those two options now watch what happens when I go to my navigation view controllers header file if I attempt to type in TTT here you'll find that Xcode does no no longer shows me that code snippet as an option and the reason being we are now in a header file and not an implementation file so Xcode is smart enough to recognize that um, what we probably want is not uh, that particular code snippet now let's create a code snippet for this add property statement and what I'm going to do is do a command uh, I'm sorry just highlight it again uh, left click at the start and then just drag and drop this one more time into my code snippets area and this time I get a code snippet I'm just gonna call this one add property and let's see here we want to probably change this as well let's change this to uh, object and we'll just call this variable name that seems simple enough and before we close this out and click on done I want to point out look take a look at the completion scopes the completion scope for this uh, particular uh, code snippet has been set to class interface methods it was previously set to class implementation the reason it's set to class interface methods is because we are within a header file now I do need to type in a completion shortcut and just even though this is counterintuitive I would normally select um, a shortcut like PPP to sort of remind me that that's the shortcut for the add property statement but in this case just to illustrate I'm going to use TTT one more time and I'm gonna hit done now we now have three code snippets in here that share that same shortcut this time you'll notice that when I start to type in TTT within my header file the only option that comes up is the app property again the reason this is occurring is because of that scope so Xcode knows that when we are within a header file it will only show us the relevant code snippets based on the scope so I hope that this particular um, tutorial has been useful to you code snippets can be incredibly useful it can make development super fast especially when you're reusing some standard code um, make sure that you also remember to actually use the code snippets I think that's one of the biggest drawbacks or sort of one of the biggest things that hold people back is they forget that they've created these snippets but if you create snippets for all of the code that you reuse and remember to use them I guarantee that your development life cycle will be shorter and things will be much smoother thanks for watching